Well, hello to everybody again. It's another Sunday. Exciting weekend this weekend though, because we've got tomorrow off. It's bank holiday, so that's going to be great. And I think it's going to be sunny. We might even get out in a little bit of that sun. So first of all, we're going to flame. Uh, we challenge them to learn the Bible verse from Psalm 121, verse 2, which answers the question, where does my help come from? And the answer is, my help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. So we're now going to hear from Denzel and then from Abby with a little bit from Jemima uh, at the end. They're going to, uh, they've learned the, the Bible verse off by heart. So here they are. My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord who made the heaven and earth. Psalm. 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 One hundred and twenty-one. Oh man. My help comes from the Lord, the Maker of heaven and earth. Psalm one hundred and twenty-one, verse two. Great, and we're now back to George Muller, and apparently this is George Muller number six. So this is the next bit of the story. We've got a lovely new picture of him, first of all, to show you. Um, here he is. You know about him now. He's this Victorian man who came from Prussia, was really rescued by God from a, a, a wasteful and empty um, time in his teenage years. Um, he gave his heart and his life to God to serve him. Um, and he felt that God was calling him to this country. He came over here. He uh, ends up in Bristol. God took him to Bristol, um, and there he builds. Uh, he he um, begins an orphanage work and uh, an educational work and a, a work in a chapel uh, with his great friend brother Craig. And having opened an orphanage in the city of Bristol, um, he has a, a dream really to build an orphanage out on some land beyond the city. Um, he finds the land on Ashley Down, and do you remember he rushes to find the landowner, uh, tries to find him, can't find him, ends up praying that night, God, would you help us? And that night God speaks and wakes the man, um, and he says to George Muller the next day, you can have this land uh, for much cheaper than I really should be selling it, because I was awake, wakened in the night. Um, and George Muller then is able to buy the land, they raise the money, and they build this fantastic orphanage. We've got this wonderful picture of Orphan House Number 1 on Ashley Down, which looks more like a stately home. I think it must have been one of the best orphanages that uh, existed at that time. It had schoolrooms, it had land around it where they were growing vegetables and where the children could play out. Uh, it was it was state-of-the-art, really, and an architect gave his time for free. And at that point, George Muller is now 45 years old, and he looks back over his life at the end of the week when the 145 children and helpers move into the orphanage, and he can hardly believe what God has done so far through his life and in his own heart, and he's so grateful to God. And then another man comes into the picture, and here's a picture of him. Some of you may know who this is. This is a man called Hudson Taylor. Um, he was born in Yorkshire. Um, he was younger than George Muller. He was born later than him. Um, and he was brought up in a Christian family. He turned away from God as a young teenager. And then age 17, he gives his life back to God. Um, he concludes that the best thing he could possibly do is offer his life to him and, and to follow God's plan for his life. And to cut a long story short, he's a chemist. He then goes on to do medicine at the London Hospital in London. Um, and then he feels that God is calling him out to China uh, as a missionary, to go as a medical missionary with his medicine um, and with others. And so he goes out there and he basically, he has four really fairly traumatic years. This is in the 1850s out in China. Um, when he arrives, there's a civil war happening that just breaks out just after he gets there. There's an, also a kind of civil war going on among some of the missionaries he meets. Um, there are riots in the city where they are. Um, he gets robbed. He gets everything stolen off him. Um, he has increasing problems with the missionary board who sent him out there not supplying him with funds. He's desperately poor. Um, and then the one thing he has left is this box, precious box of medical supplies and equipment, and it gets burnt uh, and destroyed in a, in a warehouse fire. Um, and at that point, he's at quite a, a low ebb, um, and he receives a letter from England from Mr. George Muller of Bristol, who he's never met. I'm not sure he had even heard of him. 
Um, and this letter comes just at a point when Hudson Taylor really needs some encouragement and some help. And in the letter, we've got it here, not the actual letter, but the wording, uh, George Muller writes to him, My chief object is to tell you that we love you in the Lord and that we're deeply interested in the Lord's work in China and that we are praying daily for you. I want to encourage you to tell you that God has never failed me. In the greatest difficulties, in the heaviest trials, in the deepest poverty, he has never failed me. But he has enabled me by his grace to trust in him. He has always appeared to help me and I delight to speak well of his name. He then sent with this letter some copies of his narrative, which do you remember they were calling Answers to Prayer, which they wrote down at the end of the year, all the amazing things that God was doing for them in Bristol. And he sent out 12 copies of that to Hudson Taylor in China to share around. He also speaks to him about his heart. Um, and he says to him, he says, Hudson Taylor, don't let your heart grow cold you know, through the difficult things that have happened and the trials. Don't harden your heart. He says, don't even be satisfied with this, with a lukewarm heart where you're half in and half out. But he said, you really, really need to ask God that he would come and he would set your heart on fire. And he said, that's going to happen, he said to him, um, as you study and read and think about the verses from the Bible and read the Bible and as you pray. So this was an incredible um, thing for Hudson Taylor. This was a crucial point in his life. Um, and he begins to take within, I think, weeks and months of that letter coming, he begins to take steps to move away from his missionary board. And he begins to see that he needs to trust in God, um, just as George Muller is encouraging him to do. And from that, later on, they first they became the Ningpo um, mission and then they they became known as the China Inland Mission but the seeds of that were coming from this encouragement from George Muller he wrote also at that time to Hudson Taylor he wrote and George Muller said to him as an older brother I'm writing to you to tell you about the care of my own soul uh, that this is the chief business of my life Abundant as my work is, so much so, you can imagine with all the, all the orphanages and the work with the children, that if I had strength to work 24 hours a day, I wouldn't accomplish what is there for my hands and my feet and my head and my heart. But with all of this, I consider my first business to be my primary business every day to get blessing for my own soul, food for my soul, so that I am happy in the Lord and then I work, and I work with all my heart. So he's telling him, come on, Hudson Taylor, you've got to, um, you've got to press on with God in your own heart. Um, so this reignited, really, the work of God in Hudson Taylor's heart, and then um, they struck up a friendship through letters, and they began to correspond with each other, and when Hudson Taylor, after Hudson Taylor's death, they found he had kept all of George Muller's letters, many, many letters. Um, and one letter that came about two years after that first letter said, this is for George Muller writing, The work of the Lord in China is more and more laid upon my heart, so that I've been longing and praying to help you more and more with money as well as with prayer. And with that letter came the first check. A check was written uh, from George Muller's organisation to Hudson Taylor's. Amazing. A few years later, when there was real difficulty um, and a real time of hardship among the missionaries who were starting to go out, we got some pictures of them. They went out in small numbers to start with. We've got a picture of some of the first ones who went out. Um, with Hudson Taylor sitting in the middle and then later on more and more were going out and at a time when it was very difficult and there was very little money uh, there was a note written with one of Muller's letters and it said that he had enclosed, Mr Muller enclosed 11 cheques each cheque was written out, I know we don't have cheques very often now but these are amounts of money written out to a number of the missionaries to 11 different missionary families that he was given and then another time, perhaps 10 years after this, when the China Inland Mission was very well established, again they hit a time of real hardship. And just at that point, George Muller writes to Mr Berger, who's the man who organises the mission now for Hudson Taylor, the administrator. 
Um, and he says, he's, he writes and he says, I want all the names, the names of all the missionaries who are connected with the China Inland Mission, because I think I may be able to help each of them, he says. And so Mr. Berger writes to Hudson Taylor, who's in another part of China, and says, you're not going to believe what Mr. Muller is saying now. He's saying that he wants to help all of our missionaries. And then Mr. Berger writes at the end of his letter to Hudson Taylor, God has put it in the heart of Mr. Muller to send help because he knew that our funds were sinking. This is an amazing thing. So this was the money that I told you about last time, the £2,574, 16 shillings and sixpence that was given in that particular year. Nearly all of that was going out to China. Um, this was the equivalent of perhaps £60,000. So this man, George Muller, who was a thief, wasn't he, to start with? He stole money, couldn't be trusted, is now being trusted with thousands and thousands of pounds. In our money terms, in the end, it was hundreds of thousands of pounds that was being given to him. So men would come and they would say, I've got £400 here. I want to give 100 to your orphans. I want to give 100 out for you to send Bibles. And I want to give 200 to go to missionary work. And what we discovered later on in Muller's life is that he wasn't just giving to China. He was giving out to missions across Africa and a number of other countries. Um, he would pray that God would give him funds and then he would just start to send out these checks. Really fantastic story. Meanwhile, back on Ashley Down, the work was growing. We got some wonderful pictures. Um of the inside of the orphan house. This is really amazing. So the first one we've got is um, a picture of them in their kind of a chapel. I think they also use it as their big schoolroom. Um, and on the back of the wall, and I love this, in the mission house, in the orphan house, um, they, they drew on many of the walls. They painted Bible verses and messages um, from the Bible. Uh, and on that wall, it's an old fashioned version of the verse that we know as where Jesus said, let the little children come to me. And Muller so believed this, that little children could come to Jesus. Um, he didn't believe that you just taught children about Christianity and about the Bible, and, uh, but he believed that the children themselves could come to God. And I think many of the children in flame know this, that they are able themselves to come to God, young as they are, they're able to come and meet with Jesus. And then I've got a fantastic picture, this is my favourite one, um, of one of the nurseries in the orphan house with some of the really young ones. Um, they all, to me, they all look so clean and so washed, and um, and the helpers are there with them. Got a lovely one of the pit, a picture of the boys out on the hillside, um, where they had all this space to play out, and then we've got a, another one of the dining hall where they would all come and eat. And do you remember that they were praying to God for the money? Um, often they had almost no funds, and then people would give. Um, and the money would come in, uh, or people would bring food, people would bring clothes, people would sometimes bring jewels and things, which they were able to sell uh, and use the money to provide for the orphans. The orphan house, within about 18 months of being opened on that Ashley Down, was full. Um, it had 300 children in it now, um, and so you can imagine what Muller's next prayer to God was. He comes to God and he says... Lord, really, he's saying, what next? What do we do next? And we'll find out next week what happens next. Okay, let's pray. Father, we thank you for this amazing story of this man who followed you. Uh, thank you for what he used to say to people, that you weren't calling everyone to live as he lived. You weren't calling everyone to uh, build orphanages, but you were calling everyone to do something. And Lord, we want to say, would you do something, um, Father, in our own hearts, in our own lives, would you use us, Lord? We pray too, would you give us food for our souls as you gave it to Muller? Would you help us as we read our Bibles? Would you help us as we pray, Father? We pray especially for those who are struggling to, to those of us who are struggling to sometimes read our Bibles or to pray. Would you make these things wonderful to us? Uh, would you help us when we're doing these things? Uh, Father, we pray that especially this week. We thank you for all your incredible mercy, incredible kindness towards us, Lord. We thank you that, like Muller, we can say that you have never failed us. And we worship you today for that. Amen. <laughs>